Welcome to the Good News Ride Home for Monday, June 22nd, 2020. I'm Jackson Bird. Another Neolithic structure discovered just down the street from Stonehenge. Why some people are more resilient than others. The cardboard cutouts that stadiums are using in lieu of real flesh-based human fans. And a contract job that will pay you $10,000 to record your bowel movements. Here is your daily dose of good news. It was the summer solstice on Saturday, and in lieu of welcoming their usual visitors, Stonehenge, which has been closed due to coronavirus, streamed Sunrise and Sunset live online for people all around the world to watch. But there may be a new tourist site in town once Stonehenge is able to reopen because scientists have made another discovery just two miles northeast of the famous structure. Archaeologists have discovered a large ring of 20 or more shafts that may have served as a boundary around a sacred site. The ring itself is just over a mile wide and each individual shaft is 5 feet deep and 30 feet in diameter. Professor Vince Gaffney, a lead researcher, said, quote, The size of the shafts and circuit is without precedent in the United Kingdom, end quote. It is believed to be the largest prehistoric monument ever discovered in Britain. And crucially, the discovery was made without excavation, but rather with remote sensing technology. Quoting the BBC, Dr. Richard Bates from St. Andrew's School of Earth and Environmental Sciences said using remote sensing and sampling was giving an insight to an even more complex society than we could ever imagine, end quote. Professor Gaffney said the discovery demonstrated, quote, the capacity and desire of Neolithic communities to record their cosmological belief systems in ways and at a scale that we had never previously anticipated. The area around Stonehenge is amongst the most studied archaeological landscapes on Earth, He added, it's remarkable that the application of new technology can still lead to the discovery of such a massive prehistoric structure. When these pits were first noted, it was thought they might be natural features. Only through geophysical surveys could we join the dots and see there was a pattern on a massive scale, end quote. The tests indicated that the shafts were excavated some 4,500 years ago by Neolithic people. The discovery marks a huge step forward in uncovering the mystery of Stonehenge and the lives and belief system of the Neolithic people who once lived there. It has been a tough year so far, which is quite the understatement between the pandemic and the recently amplified discussions about the impacts of racism. A concept that has been on my mind a lot lately is resiliency. What makes us resilient? Is it something that we can get better at over time? Quoting the New York Times. Resilience is the ability to recover from difficult experiences and setbacks, to adapt, move forward, and sometimes even experience growth. An individual's resilience is dictated by a combination of genetics, personal history, environment, and situational context. So far, research has found the genetic part to be relatively small, end quote. While genes may impact things like whether someone is a risk taker, if they're an introvert or extrovert, or how likely they are to experience post-traumatic stress disorder, they don't straight up cause someone to be more or less resilient than someone else. Experts think it has far more to do with nurture than nature. Quoting again, The most significant determinant of resilience, noted in nearly every review or study of resilience in the last 50 years, is the quality of our close personal relationships, especially with parents and primary caregivers. Early attachments to parents play a crucial, lifelong role in human adaptation. How loved you felt as a child is a great predictor of how you manage all kinds of difficult situations later in life, said Bessel van der Kolk, a professor of psychiatry at Boston University School of Medicine who has been researching post-traumatic stress since the 1970s. He is the founder of the Trauma Research Foundation in Boston. Dr. van der Kolk said long-term studies showed that the first 20 years of life were especially critical. Different traumas at different ages have their own impacts on our perceptions, interpretations, and expectations. These early experiences sculpt the brain because it is a use-dependent organ, he said. You can think of resilience as a set of skills that can be, and often is, learned. Part of the skill building comes from exposure to very difficult but manageable experiences, end quote. 
Those skills become what you have access to in a sort of resiliency toolbox the next time you encounter a difficult situation. For some people, the toolbox might be full of destructive coping mechanisms, drinking, drugs, gambling. For others, the ones who would be categorized as particularly resilient people, their toolbox has been filled with, quote, optimism that is also realistic, a moral compass, religious or spiritual beliefs, cognitive and emotional flexibility, and social connectedness. The most resilient among us are people who generally don't dwell on the negative, who look for opportunities that might exist even in the darkest times. During a quarantine, for example, a resilient person might decide it's a good time to start a meditation practice, take an online course, or learn to play guitar. Research has shown that dedication to a worthy cause or a belief in something greater than oneself, religiously or spiritually, has a resilience-enhancing effect, as does the ability to be flexible in your thinking. Many, many resilient people learn to carefully accept what they can't change about a situation and then ask themselves what they can actually change. Dr. Stephen M. Southwick, a professor emeritus of psychiatry, PTSD, and resilience at Yale University School of Medicine, said, Conversely, banging your head against the wall and fretting endlessly about not being able to change things has the opposite effect, lessening your ability to cope, end quote. And a final note, it's common to not feel like you're that resilient when you're in the moment. Resiliency builds over time, because each time you make it to the other side of a tough situation, everything you went through will have made you stronger and added more tools to your toolbox. What's in the toolbox is not finite. But in the moment, it may feel very, very tough. You may not feel like any of those characteristics I listed above apply to you. But it's important to remember that even people who are resilient struggle. They're not perfect, unfeeling robots. To get through to the other side, trauma counselors advise focusing on the now, narrowing your thinking to the present and to what you're able to control. Keep focusing on the next first step. And before you know it, you'll be on the other side stronger than you were before. Imagine this, a convenient tabletop device that gives complete lab-grade blood count results in minutes with nothing but a small prick and two drops of blood. No more having to draw vials of blood only to wait days for critical test results. Today, you can invest in site diagnostics and the future of easier, faster blood testing at OurCrowd.com. Doctors rely on complete blood count tests to make accurate diagnoses, but they're often forced to postpone critical medical treatment while waiting for test results. Site Diagnostics explains that their solution combines rapid scanning microscopic technology with computer vision and artificial intelligence to deliver results within minutes, not days. Site's technology is the first of its kind cleared by the FDA for moderate complexity lab settings. Our crowd is investing in the important medical innovation work Site is doing and has made it so accredited investors can join them and invest too. Our Crowd's crowdsourced investing platform gives accredited investors access to early stage funding rounds in some of the most promising companies around the world. So now you can set up your Our Crowd account for free and invest in pre IPO companies alongside professional venture capitalists. Learn more about investing in site diagnostics at info.ourcrowd.com slash good news. Setting up your account is free. Get started right now at info.ourcrowd.com slash good news. Again, that is info.ourcrowd.com slash good news. We may be staying home as much as possible, but the summer season isn't on hold and getting fit for the summer shouldn't be either. Fortunately, you can get access to professional training from the comfort of your home with Beachbody On Demand. Thousands have joined Beachbody On Demand to stay fit during the COVID-19 lockdown, and they weren't disappointed. With Beachbody On Demand, you can get access to over 1,300 workouts that you can stream anytime to fit your own schedule at home. Want to grab a quick workout in between virtual meetings? No problem. Beachbody On Demand has workouts as short as 10 minutes that don't require extra equipment. In the time it would have taken you to drive and park at the gym, you can be finished working out right in your home. And Beachbody On Demand has hundreds of effective workouts for all fitness levels, including bodybuilding, weight training, cardio, hit, yoga, and even dance workouts. 
I tried the Morning Meltdown 100 and I couldn't believe how much more I was motivated to do with the trainer Jericho McMatthew's encouragement and the pumping music from the DJ. If your workout is feeling stale or you have trouble being motivated on your own, Beachbody On Demand will help you try something new and stick with it. And listeners of the Good News Ride Home can get a special free trial membership by texting Good News to 303030. You'll get full access to the entire platform, all the workouts, nutrition information, and support absolutely free. Just text Good News to 303030. Recently, I mentioned how various soccer leagues around the world are adding synthetic crowd noise and, in some cases, computer-generated fans in the stands to the telecasts of their games, which remain closed to real human spectators. Well, some sports stadiums around the world have opted for a more analog option, cardboard cutouts of fans. In Germany, this started with Ingo Müller, a soccer fan who was disappointed that he wouldn't be able to attend games in person. And after his girlfriend joked that he should just send a photo of himself to his favorite team's stadium, he got the idea to work with a local printer and offer a similar opportunity to other fans. He talked to the club owners and then set up a portal online where fans could upload photos of themselves for 19 euros, or about 21 US dollars, and the photo would then be printed onto a cardboard cutout and placed in the stadium for the game. So far, 21,000 fans have purchased cutouts, and Mueller has received inquiries from sports teams in 15 countries around the world. Cardboard fans have already filled the stands at baseball stadiums in Taiwan, rugby games in Australia, and soccer matches all over Europe and beyond. And it's not just Mueller running it all. A cottage industry has sprung up with companies all over the world partnering with teams and stadiums. While most are sticking to cardboard for now, Oz Sports, an Iceland-based company, is working on augmented reality projections of fans' avatars. And Denmark offered up a giant Zoom call to 10,000 fans at a recent game. In South Korea, one team filled the stands with actual sex dolls. Fortunately, those were not matched up with the faces of actual fans, and they were fully clothed, but still netted the team an $81,000 fine. But back to the cardboard cutout craze. While the proceeds from Mueller's venture are going to the team's charities, other teams are viewing the opportunity as a way to recoup lost ticket revenue from a spectatorless season. According to Georgetown professor Marty Conway, ticket sales on average account for 27% of annual revenue across all U.S. sports leagues. But it means even more to small teams like minor leagues and colleges. Edrisi Argandiwal, co-founder of the Oakland Roots, an independent soccer club in California, is choosing to offer cardboard cutouts at $35 to $45 a pop, not just to make up crucial lost ticket revenue, but also as a community initiative. For an independent team, those fans are the real heart and soul of the club. They helped build it, Argandiwal says. And after the season ends, he plans to place the cutouts in a series of collages around Oakland to represent the community's resiliency through the pandemic. At other stadiums, fans who purchase the cardboard cutouts may get them sent back as a souvenir to hang on to, which is lucky because it's apparently pretty difficult to find your face during a broadcast. While Ingo Mueller's portal has a map of the stadium with photos of each section so you can click and see your cardboard cutout, most stadiums don't offer an easy way to locate your cutout or even confirm that it actually got printed. They've encountered other logistical issues too, like in Australia where someone uploaded photos of serial killers which were printed and displayed during a game before anyone realized the error. Still, many fans are happy to throw their money behind their favorite teams or associated charities and have a fun souvenir of this very unique season. Plus, some say it's a way for them to attend away games and add some support for their team when they wouldn't usually be able to. And ending today with a bit of a classifieds ad. Well, not really, because we weren't actually paid to promote this or anything, but it is a job opportunity that I thought was weird and funny enough to tell you about. Bidet company Tushy is offering up $10,000 for a three-month contract worker to record their bowel movements and perform other toilet-related tasks. A bit of background on Tushy's recent activities from Lifehacker, quote, At the end of 2019, Tushy announced their hashtag Bidet2020 campaign. This ended up being strangely prophetic in two ways. First, the hashtag looks like an amusing typo promoting the now-presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. 
And then there's the whole pandemic toilet paper panic slash shortage, which resulted in a steady stream of bidet sales throughout the year so far. End quote. And now they're looking for a VP of Fecal Matters. Here's how Tushy describes the job, and quick content warning, what follows includes more bathroom-related puns than in Austin Powers' movie. Quote, Tushy is looking for our first VP of Fecal Matters to assist in the day-to-day operations of our Bidet 2020 campaign. With guidance from our chief pooping officer, Dr. Mark Hyman, our new VP of Fecal Matters will be testing and studying their own pooping habits and documenting it via Tushy's social media. This will be a three-month, fart-time, $10,000 contract role requiring about 30 to 60 minutes per day, depending on how many times you poop, to poop and document your experience, end quote. And in case you are actually interested, here is a breakdown of what you'd be doing on the job. Quote, minimum 90-day commitment to the bidet life, analyzing and documenting your own daily pooping habits, interview those closest to you about pooping habits, testing tushy products against other bathroom products and brands, produce video content for social media, testing and debunking myths surrounding gut and butt health, and a lot of pooping, end quote. To apply, you'll have to make a 60 to 90 second application video, the top five candidates will move on to a round of Zoom interviews, and the new VP of Fecal Matters will start work on July 22nd. So if, like millions of people right now, you're looking for a way to make some extra cash and this segment didn't completely gross you out, you might be just the candidate they're looking for. Or if you don't mind bathroom humor and have a creative mind but don't really want to project your toilet habits all over the internet, Tushy is also holding another $10,000 contest to come up with their next ad campaign. So yeah, Tushy is trying to make poop influencers a thing. Just another day in the year 2020. So remember a while back when I mentioned the woman on TikTok who's been trying to trade a bobby pin for a house in a project inspired by the red paperclip guy from about 15 years ago? Well, she is still at it. She went from the bobby pin to earrings and on and on up into an Apple TV, followed by some Bose headphones, an Xbox One, then a 2011 MacBook Pro, and most recently, a Canon DSLR with a couple of lenses and a light. And she says that her latest trade is coming today. It'll actually probably be up by the time that you hear this, so if you want to see what it is, follow her journey to a house, or maybe you have something that you think you could trade with her, you can follow her at Trade Me Project on TikTok or Instagram. Link in the show notes. I think it's kind of fun to follow along with, so just thought I'd give you a bit of an update there. But otherwise, that is all from me today. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I will talk to you tomorrow.